Thermal Imaging 101. We left off talking about the importance of wiping the lens of the camera. So let's talk about the picture next. What is the camera actually seeing when we point it at the target? First of all, the camera is reading, thermal imaging is reading actually long wave infrared energy between 7 and 14 microns. You may say, what in the world is that? Well, light is broken up into little bands or narrow bands. And when we talk about infrared energy, that's non-visible light. That's something we can't see. And that's 7 to 14 micron. It's 7 to 14 micron means a micron is a millionth of a meter. When we talk about what this is actually reading, if I point this at a target, it's reading the surface temperatures and the temperature differences coming off of that in that specific range. It is not reading gas temperatures per se. It's not reading uh, the smoke temperatures. There's a lot of argument in the scientific community that you can read smoke temperatures because smoke is a particulate. Here's the thing I want to tell you. It may be able to read certain parts of the smoke, but what I want to tell you is I'm not smart enough to risk your life on my opinion or a small percentage. I'm looking at a device that's programmed at a preset emissivity to measure surfaces. If I start telling you it reads within a certain range and you may be able to do certain things and you might not, I wouldn't do that. I'd stay within the knowns. This also produces something called apparent temperatures. Well, what is an apparent temperature? An apparent temperature is an estimated temperature based on values predetermined and programmed into this device. Well, those values are based on a preset emissivity. Well, what in the world is emissivity? Emissivity is the base, basically this surface here is a brick wall behind me. Is this surface rough or is it shiny? Numerically, if we look at the textbook definition, emissivity is rated between zero and one. Zero being closer to a mirror and one being closer to like this rough brick wall here. So one is a perfect emitter, a perfect black body. It allows energy to be admitted, absorbed, or transmitted perfectly. Whereas when we're closer to zero, it's closer to a perfect mirror where it reflects all that energy. So think about that. If your camera's programmed at 0.95 to 0.97 emissivity, that means it's closer to this rough surface. So the further I get away from that number, closer to a mirror or shiny surface, the less accurate that temperature measurement will be. That temperature measurement is an apparent temperature, which is an estimate. Thermal imaging cameras are known as qualitative thermal imaging. That is fire service thermal imaging. So when we look at qualitative thermography, we're looking for estimated values of where the problem might be. We're looking for an overheated spot in a wall. We're looking for heat coming from down a hallway. For example, it's not normal to have a 500 degree dryer vent when you're doing your size up. I don't care if it's 562 degrees, 722 degrees. I just know that's not normal. That's known as an anomaly. So if you get caught up in exact measurements, you're going to get in trouble. This device is designed to see temperature differences, heat and heat loss. I'm not trying to get an exact measurement. Remember that. It can give us an idea of how hot it is, but in reality, it's a lot hotter than that if we were able to take thermal couple readings, optical gas imaging, and measure the differences in, in heat flux and things that they've used in other studies to show us exactly how hot that environment is. So use this as a diagnostic tool, not as a thermometer. Stay intelligently aggressive.